My name is Lena Rasha. I've been working in open source for quite some time now. I'm currently employed by the Erasmus Medical Center and the Advanced Hochschule von Greda. And I'm here to tell you a little bit about open source in research. So first, what is free and open source software? The term is a bit important because open source software and free software are not necessarily the same things. Free software doesn't mean open. So you can, many of us remember freeware on the internet from when we were younger. This is software where you have no access to the source code and you can't work with it. You can't modify it due to the license. This is not great for science. On the other hand, open source doesn't mean free. So for those of you who are producing research software, just because you're making your software open source, it doesn't mean it has to be free software. And this together, the intersection of these two is often known as free and open source software or FLOSS, free slash libre open source software. And this just refers to off software that is both open and free. Open source is simply licensing your work so it can be used how you want. Making your software open source is just a matter of setting out the terms of how you want your software to be used. It doesn't mean that you have to give up control of your software. It doesn't mean that you're putting it out to the community forever. It just means you're choosing and saying for yourself, setting boundaries on how you want your software to be used. So it's a very important step all the time. For those who want, the open source also makes it easy for others to remix your software, to reuse it, to build upon your software, add new features if they want. And if you're building a project where community is important, where you want your software to be used by a lot of people, making it open source in such a way that people can reuse and work with you can be a really great boost for your software, just in terms of visibility and people who want to use it, things like that. So why use and promote open source? Open source is part of the ethics of um, scientists and hackers a little bit. When you're writing the software, when you're working on projects together, a lot of the libraries you use for Python, things like this, if you're using different programming languages, a lot of the libraries you use will be open source. You're benefiting from a lot of work that other people have done so far. And it's a nice feeling to collaborate and give back. Now you've built your software or your project on years and years of free work that was produced before, and now you're giving back to the community. It also means distributed innovation. So when you're making software open source and free so that other people can work on it, this means that other people will give back contributions. They'll report bugs when they have issues running your software. They'll tell you new features that they want. You don't have to implement them, but you're able to take all of these good ideas from the community and things like this. Importantly for science, open source is easier to review, reuse, and integrate. And when we talk about open source and science, if you want your software to be distributed widely, to be used in a lot of systems, one of the best things you can do for it is licensing it in such a way that everyone can use it and set it up on their own system. Things like Galaxy, so I'm of course very biased here and we'll talk a lot about Galaxy, but in the Galaxy community, we can give a huge platform of, you know, on Use Galaxy U, 30,000 users to free source. It's free advertising, but we can only do that for open source software. There are a lot of risks associated with closed code too. When you have closed source software that's used in science, you can't review it very easily. The community can't review it very easily. Only the reviewers of the paper sometimes. And if there are errors in the software, if there are bugs, then these can be missed for years and years. And these will affect a lot of scientific results downstream. So having open source reviewable software, it's very important for reproducible, good quality science. A lot of the journals are adapting this and starting to require disclosure or uh, publishing of your source code for all of your software too. This is from a scientific perspective, really a good thing for the community. So how do you know if something is open source? You'll see on a lot of GitHub repositories, which I think everyone here is familiar with, thanks to OLS, is a little license icon on the right-hand side of the repository. Also on things like slides, you can see the CC BY of these, this slide deck at the top. You can look for a couple of different files within the license, and these files need to be there if it's going to be open source software that you can reuse. But it's not just for software. I know I talk a lot about software, but it's also for data. There are different licenses for data for things like databases that you want to make accessible for photos or training materials, things like this. 
All of these are options, and if you want people to be able to use them, you need to license it. One of the common fears I hear about a lot is if I publish my software online, if I do it in the open, it'll be, I'll be scooped. Someone will take my software and claim it's their own. But this isn't necessarily true. If someone steals your software, there is at least a traceable log in GitHub, or which we'll get to in a minute. Um, there is a copy of your software already online. That, and if you already have a community around that, it'll be very obvious that someone took it. And if you're still worried, I've heard some people saying that they publish preprints as a way to document that, hey, they were first to write the software and to really make sure they stake their claim on that software. Um, so don't worry about that. Just work in the open. It's better for the community. It's better for the world and it's good for science. Publishing, sharing open source code. One of the easiest and most effective ways to do this is version control. I'm sure you're all learning about Git and GitHub if you haven't already. But version control is a fantastic way to publish and share code with others. It gives you a whole timeline of your software, and it makes it easy to reuse, contribute, and make modifications to your software. So why? Collaborating is easy. One of the common things is reverting accidents. If you make some bad changes in your code or one of your collaborators does, you can always revert. You can always go back to before then. It makes it easy to integrate the changes from multiple developers. Like with Galaxy, there are some 200 contributors to the code base or the training materials as well. And all of us can work together collaboratively because we use version control. Also, offsite copies of your software. Everyone has computer issues. Everyone loses a hard drive at some point or gets their hard drive encrypted by some hackers, things like this. If you have all of your work in the open and public, then you can just download a new copy again and start working again. Git and GitHub are very common, a very common choice. Git is one of the most common version control systems. There are others. GitHub, likewise, is one of the most common Git hosts, but there are others. Um, depends on what you want to use. One of the nice things you get with GitHub is a large existing user base and large community of people who will be able to contribute to your software to low barrier for entry. If you need to learn more about Git, there is a great uh, set of lessons from the software carpentries. But one of the important notes is that Git is very, very complex. My partner teaches a um, Git together session where they teach how to use Git to the colleagues in our office. And there's just so much to learn about Git, but you don't need to learn all of it now. Just start with the important parts. The rest comes later. There, you'll see a lot of guides online that'll say, oh, you need to learn about how the commit graph works and things like this. But if you just want to publish your code, you don't need any of the fancy stuff. So a few steps to make your work open source. A readme is a very important part of this. If you want people to know what your software is and how to start using it, that's the number one thing people will see. So be sure to include lots of good images there. License, if, it has, if it's going to be open source, it needs a license file. So it takes two minutes to add a license with GitHub. It's really easy. Just do it. Same with the contributing guide. Uh, GitHub has some template contributing guides that make it really easy to tell people how you want them to contribute to your, uh, to your repositories. Having a public roadmap. We have uh, talked about the Kanban boards and the Agile. Having a public roadmap is a great way to tell community what you're working on, what features you're going to implement, things like that. And that can help people get excited for your software. Um, publishing list of issues, same. It feels bad to say, hey, my software has bugs, but at least putting them out in the open, you can track the things you've done or not done. A code of conduct, as I'm sure you've learned from OLS, is a very important thing. Contact and citation can be very useful as well. If you have a GitHub repository, you can easily get those from Zenodo and Figshare if you need a DUI. There's a nice website for how to choose a license. Um, there are lots of different license choices, and they give you a lot of different freedom to choose what you want your software to be able to do or what you want other people to be able to do with your software. Some people don't want businesses to use their software for free, and there are licenses that support this, or some people want everyone to use it for free. Lots of different choices. But the ultimate goal, of course, is full reproducibility. And we're getting a lot closer with things like Jupyter and Binder, where you can publish your software, but also a notebook where people can run your software online which is a fantastic way to get people to use your software. Uh, taking it further, there's a lot of ways for you to contribute if you're a first-time contributor. 
and to get involved in the open source software movement and contributing to the open source communities. So there are lots of nice links here if you want to explore them. And lastly is the Turing Way has a nice handbook on reproducible data science and making software open source and publishing and making it accessible to people. So with that, thank you.